Hi everyone, I'm Tatiana Armstrong, a Customer Success Manager here at Clockwise, and the goal of this video is to make sure you know how to set up your Clockwise account for success. First, let's learn what Clockwise is. Clockwise is a smart calendar assistant that optimizes your calendar to free up blocks of uninterrupted time. We define focus time as at least two hours of uninterrupted time on your calendar. You tell Clockwise what meetings are flexible enough to move and within what parameters, and we'll do the rest to optimize for your specific focus time goals. You're watching this video because you've decided to download Clockwise or you're curious about what it can do for you. The pain points we're really looking to solve for is if you struggle to be productive during your workday due to too many meetings, poorly scheduled meetings, the inability to understand how to optimize for your particular working style, or just handling too many interruptions in your day. This is not just a problem you're facing in a vacuum. Calendars are an organizational issue. You can only do so much to help optimize your calendar for productivity. Implementing a tool like Clockwise will take care of the busy work so you can focus on your work, not micromanaging your calendar. Clockwise looks to improve your calendar in the following ways. It will optimize your calendar, protect your newly created focus time, serves as your personal calendar assistant with features like color coding, personal calendar sync, Slack sync, and more. And we don't only look to get more focus time for you, but we want to find more focus time for your team. Now let's jump into introducing Clockwise's features and how to set up your account for success. First is Autopilot. Optimizing your calendar is made possible through this feature. You are in control of which meetings are put onto Autopilot. Consider the best candidates to be small, internal, reoccurring meetings that are flexible enough to move throughout the week, but don't have to happen at a specific time. One-on-ones are an excellent candidate for Autopilot. Once you find the right meeting to turn on Autopilot, consider how flexible that meeting is. You can move this meeting within the day or within the week. Then consider your meeting preferences for when you'd ideally like these meetings to be scheduled. Go to your settings, working hours and meeting preferences, and add the level of customization that you prefer for your week. Think about maybe starting a little later on Monday mornings so you have time to organize your week. Give yourself some buffer in the morning from your starting time and when your meeting should be scheduled. Do the same for your afternoon. Do you really want to have a meeting scheduled at 5 p.m.? And lastly, no one wants a meeting at 5 p.m. on a Friday. This is where you can control that. Now that you've chosen which meetings to put on autopilot, you've designated how flexible each meeting should be, you've updated your meeting preferences to ensure all meetings will be rescheduled to a convenient time for you, and we consider best practice to be communicating with your colleagues to make sure they know you're using Clockwise, why the meetings will move, and what to expect. Now, Clockwise is ready to work its magic. Every day at 4 p.m., Clockwise will consider all meetings that are flexible enough to be moved, score how useful moving the meeting will be, and reschedule the meetings to the most efficient times. The only reasons meetings will move are to create more focus time for you and your teammates, resolve conflicts for you and your teammates, and to make sure meetings occur within the meeting preferences that Clockwise users have configured for themselves. Your meeting participants do not have to be on Clockwise to use Autopilot, but we highly encourage that they at least sign up to set their ideal meeting preferences since this feature does not exist in Google Calendar. Next, let's move on to focus time. As mentioned before, focus time is defined as at least two hours of uninterrupted time on your calendar. You should consider how much focus time is required for your specific role and use your weekly focus time goals to stay accountable. Consider how much of your time will always be dedicated to meetings and how much time you'll realistically be able to dedicate to heads down time. Best practice is to not overbook yourself with focus time. 
you should always try to maintain some level of availability for your teammates to schedule ad hoc meetings with you or interrupt your day with questions. You should be training yourselves to respect focus time without interrupting it. So allowing free time on your calendar is important. Once you're ready to schedule your weekly focus time goal, go to your settings, focus time, lunch, and travel time. Here is where you can set your preferences of when you'd like your focus time to sync, mornings or afternoons. Sync your focus time to your calendar and remember to pick a realistic number for your weekly goal. Here you can see I'll hit my goal of 12 hours a week of focus time, but I'll still have time available on my calendar for last minute bookings or free chat time with my colleagues. Next, let's go to your team analytics. Team analytics is a great way to stay up to date on your focus time trends and consider your teammates bandwidth. Click on your teammates tab where your groups are sorted by team. The use cases for team analytics include starting your week with your own analytics to understand what days of the week you have the most focus time to dedicate to your projects. If you're a manager, use your team analytics in your one-on-ones to understand if your reports have enough time on their plate to do their work. This simple step can help prioritization, recognizing a healthy meeting to focus time ratio, and help avoid burnout. You can use this button to choose what time frame you want to focus on.